Howdy folks, welcome back to yet another video. Now you might be asking yourself, Jonathan, what the heck? What happened to the old canopy that you just got not long ago? You already replaced it? And yes, I did replace it because the new one that I found, I found it for a steal, great, great price. The other one was aluminum. It didn't have any kind of carpet headliner. It didn't have insulation. It was extremely loud to sleep in when it was raining. This one has a carpet headliner, so it's already insulated. It had dually roof racks already attached, so it was just a no-brainer, and I swapped it out for the same exact, I sold the old one for the same price that I bought the new one for, and so, like I said, it was just a no-brainer. But either of those canopy options, the plan is, this is going to be a temporary build because, well, I very, very soon here am going to be ordering something extremely exciting. I'm buying a brand new camper for the truck. Now, I don't want to give away too much. It is gonna be slightly somewhat of a surprise, but I will say it's very unique. It's something that a lot of people might not have seen before. And I think that it's going to serve my purposes perfectly. So very soon here, I'm gonna be ordering that, which is really exciting, but that is going to take four to six weeks, potentially even more. And I do want to have some kind of truck build in the meantime. So that being said today, I'm actually going to be doing a simple budget friendly truck bed build. Like I said, I, it's gonna be temporary. So I'm gonna keep things very simple. I just wanna have something to use in the meantime while I'm waiting for my other camper. With that being said, let's head to the hardware store and get started on this very simple truck bed build. So in total, I ended up spending about $120 at the hardware store. Now I probably will have to go back and get some more materials, but this is everything that I needed to get started. Lumber is really expensive now, so nothing can truly be that budget anymore, unfortunately. I'm not the best of a woodworker ever, so please keep that in mind as I put this build together. So what I have here are two two by eight planks. I had them cut these at the hardware store down to the length of my truck bed, which is 72 and a half inches. These are gonna be the main supports for the actual truck bed platform itself. And then I also got a four by eight piece of three quarter inch plywood. This, I also had them cut uh, to 26 inches, which is the length of the mattress that I'm gonna be using. And it is also 72 and a half inches long, which is the length of my truck bed. For the hardware, I just got a couple packs of these one and a quarter inch wood screws and some very basic hinges that I'll be using to create uh, some extra storage under the platform. Okay, so as you could see, the two by eight is actually much taller than the wheel well because it just so happens the little ridge right here is right next to the wheel well. So that's where the support is gonna have to sit on top of that ridge. So I don't want this to stick up that high above the wheel well. So I'm gonna rip about three inches off of the two by eights and wish me luck.
So I have the bed moved over to this side. It was over here, but as you can see those cords coming out of the truck bed, that is for a second battery when I had my truck camper, but those are kind of getting in the way. So for now, uh, for this build, I'm just gonna keep the bed and the drawer system on this side. If you see these hinges over here, I was kind of playing around with the idea of having a, a cabinet type space that opens up on the far end over there. But since this is just gonna be a temporary build, I'm not even gonna deal with the hassle. I'm just gonna make one full length drawer that runs the entire length of the entire sleeping platform. So I'm just marking a, a very light line um, where the center of the support beam is gonna be. That way when I fasten the platform down, I'm making sure that I'm drilling directly into the middle of the beam. So I got the platform all put together, fastened down. Now tomorrow I'm gonna get the drawer put together. Um, I'm pretty much running pretty low on daylight here and I still gotta go to the store to get more supplies. So the project will continue tomorrow. So the saw at Home Depot was actually out of commission today, which kind of sucks because that means I have to make a lot more cuts than I would have had to otherwise. If I had like a full on woodworking shop, that wouldn't be a huge deal at all. But given the fact that I'm, I'm working with really limited resources here, very limited tools, I don't even have saw horses. I'm using my tailgate to make my cuts. It's kind of nice to have Home Depot make as many cuts as you can have them make on the spot, especially when you're paying a premium for the for the plywood, you know? But whatever, it is what it is, it's not a big deal. Um, it's just gonna be a couple extra cuts that we've gotta make. This is the sleeping platform. This is kind of like the skeleton right now. We're gonna be making the drawer today, but this is a uh, three quarter inch Radianta pine, I think, plywood that's on top here. And then on the sides, we've got two two by eights they were originally, but since they have to sit on top of these ridges, I ripped two inches off of them. So now they're two by sixes. And I just have the three quarter inch plywood bolted onto the top or screwed onto the top with one and a half inch wood screws. The platform extends all the way to the end in one long piece, as do both of the supports. The plywood actually, if you could see here, the plywood actually fits in to these creases in the truck very, very well and tight and secure. So those plus the weight of the platform is kind of what's holding it together and it's very, very sturdy. I know some people might be thinking like, don't you want to bolt it down to the truck or secure it in some other kind of way? And I've seen a lot of builds where they actually didn't even have to secure it, just the weight alone of the platform and the plywood kept everything together, especially when I put the drawer in. So I'm gonna start like that and see if everything stays in place. While off-roading, it might be a little bit bouncy, but like I said, we'll start here, keep it simple, and then go from there. So unfortunately, I had to get a whole nother sheet of three quarter inch plywood to build the, the drawer. I almost had enough left over from the first sheet, but it wasn't gonna be enough and I'd rather have a little bit too much because I'm also gonna be making compartments for the drawers as well. So I went ahead and I picked up one more sheet today. The drawer that I'm gonna build is gonna run almost the entire length of the, uh, the platform, but it's gonna be a couple inches shorter and I'm not gonna use any slides or anything like that because I've seen plenty of builds where they just use the truck bed to slide out the drawer and it seems to work totally fine. So that's the method that I'm going with.
Okay, some of you guys might be wondering what this is. And this nifty tool is, uh, it's a professional cutting guide made by a company called Empire. And it's just this metal, this metal edge that comes apart into two pieces. So if you're cutting shorter pieces, you can use half of it, which I believe is um, over 48 inches, or it's about 48 inches, one half. And then you could put them together to rip whole eight foot pieces of wood if you need to. And you just clamp this down onto the wood and you rest the edge of your circular saw against the edge of this and you get a nice straight line. There's other ways you could do this. You could use, you know, plywood or any other straight edge, but this is like really legit and I get the straightest cuts using something like this, hands down. It's only also like 25 bucks at Home Depot, which is pretty cool. So once you have everything lined up, you just clamp it down with your clamps of choice. It also actually comes with little C clamps, but I left those upstairs and I had these ones in my truck already. You just wanna make sure to clamp it down really good so that way your edge doesn't slide while you're cutting. Now, as you see, the edge of the circular saw just runs right along that edge for the entire cut and that way you get a cut straight as an arrow. This big piece of plywood here that I need to cut next is too large to hang off of the tailgate. The weight distribution is uneven. So what I did is I got two little extra pieces of wood that I had here, laid the wood right on top and we're gonna be making our cuts off the end over here. All right, so now we've got all four sides for the drawer and also the bottom all complete. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put those all together. This isn't, this probably isn't gonna be like the proper way to do it, but this is the only way that, that I know how. Okay, so I have all of the walls fastened together. Now I'm gonna flip it over and secure the walls down to the actual, um, the base of the drawer. Not bad, it's pretty snug. Uh, it gets a bit of resistance, but honestly, I'd rather have it be a little snug than too loose because that way it keeps it nice and secure when I'm driving. Oh, yeah. Now I've just got to put on a face to the drawer and then a handle as well. Here's the test. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, nice. So the only caveat is, as you can see, the drawer itself is not that tall. I'm not gonna really be able to fit many tall items into it, but that's because I wanted to keep the platform as low as possible, so I have as much headspace as possible, since this is just a normal cab height camper show. But we'll make it work. So before I finish up the face for the drawer and get that all glued on, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut some dividers just because I have the saw out, I'm already cutting everything. So I might as well get, get everything cut that I'm going to need cut. This just happens to be the perfect height of the drawers 
and if I cut them well enough, I think I'll be able to just wedge it into the drawer rather than having to add wood glue or uh, screws or something because they're just gonna be dividers. So it's not that crucial that they're like super, super sturdy. Perfect. It is kind of loose, looser than I would like. So I might add wood glue or something. Not sure just yet, but for now I'll just get all of them cut. Check this out guys, I didn't say anything when this happened, but I accidentally cut into my tailgate a little bit when I was using it as a sawhorse. That's pretty funny. Honestly, if this was a newer truck, I might be a little bummed, but since it's such an old truck, there's worse things that could have happened. In case you're curious and wondering how you find these really cool handles, these are actually uh, chest handles. So they go on the sides of like the chests, storage chests. Yeah, you get them at the hardware store, but it's categorized as a chest handle. Now I just went back and I added some more two inch screws to secure the platform to the support beams here. Yesterday I used, I believe these are one and a quarter or one and a half inch screws. And I didn't put that many and today when I would, took the platform out it felt felt a little bit wobbly and so I figured I'd rather have it very very secure just to be safe so I got I think four additional screws on either side welcome back to day number day number three of the truck build now things are definitely going a little bit slower than anticipated, but that's because my original plan went out the window when I realized that this build was gonna be more temporary. The whole time I've just been kind of winging it and um, trying to figure things out as we go, but so far it's turned out pretty solid. But uh, the original plan that I intended to build, there was a cabinet that I was going to make, but to do so, I would have to get one more sheet of plywood and I'm not gonna do that because this build probably isn't going to last that long. Once I get the new camper shell, I'm gonna have you know, a much more roomy area to work with. So I do want to utilize that by doing a more extensive custom build for that camper. But in the meantime, I do have a lot of plywood left over from what I've built so far. And I've been trying to figure out a way to implement that because we have it, so we might as well. And I think I found a solution and it's not gonna be anything fancy. It's gonna be really, really simple, but I do think that it will provide a little bit of utility value. And like I said, we have the plywood, so we might as well just throw it together and see what happens. Okay, so what, what I'm gonna be building today I'm just gonna make a very simple box that goes up here on the back and it's gonna act as a table to set stuff on. And then also I'm gonna have the top lid open up so that way there's some storage that I could put things away out of sight, have a little bit of organization. I'll have, you know, the rest of the area will be open for, for whatever else to be determined. <laughs> I have my four sides for the box. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble these using screws. Now, you could probably use wood glue if you had like the proper clamps and all that, but we're just gonna screw it together because that way works just as good in my opinion. Now, since it's three quarter inch plywood, if the plywood is, was thinner, then I probably, I don't know. I don't know if you're supposed to screw into the edges of plywood that's less than three quarters of an inch. Either way, we have three quarters of an inch, so that should be plenty thick enough to prevent the wood from splitting. But I'm also gonna drill pilot holes just to make sure that the wood doesn't split. So 
a little tough lining everything up because of the uh, the ridges in the truck bed. That's all right. Doesn't have to be perfect. Of course, the caveat to making a box like this is if you could see here, not everything, not everything aligns perfectly. Um, I would imagine if you do it the proper way with wood glue and sealing everything together properly, then that would be a much more even way of doing it. But for this purpose, it really doesn't need to be perfectly straight uh, since it's just going to be a storage box in the back there. It just so happens that I actually have the perfect piece already cut to be the lid. Now it's a little bit short. There's a little bit of a lip here on the edge, but I'd rather keep my other last large piece of plywood to do something else and have the little lip here. That's okay, it's not a big deal. I'm actually having it overhang um, on either side. That way I just have extra table space because there's really no sense in trimming off the sides. I would say it's more beneficial to have the extra table space. I've just got these classic narrow utility hinges. There's tape on them because I opened it up and I didn't want the screws to spill out, but super basic, super simple. Um, I think they should do the trick. Well, well, well. Just kidding. <laughs> How'd you get here? I told you Look to who back. it is. <laughs> wow. I'm kidding, I'm Jeez. just like, feeding into the controversy there's no controversy. the rumors that already got cleared up last video oh yeah that's right how's it going it's good what a mess okay so yesterday i ended up getting this box finished and put together my camera was acting up so i couldn't film but it's very simple i just have these hinges, excuse the million holes there, I kind of messed up a couple times, but I just have the hinges on the top and it just opens and closes just like that. Today we're gonna be finishing up a few little details. Now these probably aren't gonna be the last things that I do to the build overall, but for the purposes of this video, after today, the build's gonna be done. We're just gonna get on the road and do a little bit of camping out of it. And then the other things that come up, I'll probably document as they go. But let me show you what we're getting into today. I picked up this indoor outdoor carpet material, just a small roll of it. And I'm gonna be putting this on top of the platform. And then I've got a couple panels that I'm gonna be adding to the back as well, just to have some extra floor space or somewhere where I could sit down if I don't want to be in bed. I'm gonna cut a piece that's roughly the size of the platform, glue it down. Once that's stuck, then I'll go back and trim off the excess that's hanging off the edges. That's why we, that way we have an exact fit for the platform. Just using a normal utility knife to cut this. I'm gonna spray both surfaces actually both the, uh, the sleeping platform and the carpet. And what you're supposed to do with this one is you're supposed to spray it on and let it sit for about a minute until both surfaces are tacky. That way you get the best adhesion.
Not bad. Let me explain what I've got going on here. So this is the box, the storage box, obviously. I put some carpet on the front just so it's softer. This is just a loose uh, piece of wood that I cut to fit in right here. And I put some carpet on top. And the reason that I cut this piece was because the truck bed has ridges and you can't sit on the ridges because it's just really uncomfortable. So what this platform does is it gives me a spot to sit, hang out, relax. You know, I could have my arm here, I could have the tailgate open, I could have the window open, take in the view, and it's really, really comfortable. If it's bad weather or whatever, I could just chill here. And this is nice and soft too, to lean up against. I maybe even could put like an armrest or something here in the future, I don't know. But here's another cool thing. I could slide this little platform here forward a bit, and then, I just turn around and I can use this as a table to cook on, eat, do work, whatever. It's just right here. That opens up. I can access whatever's inside. So yeah, this this little piece right here, it's it seems like a small detail, but it actually adds a lot of utility value. So I'm pretty happy that I decided to put this in. It just slides back. Chillin'. Well, that's pretty much, that's pretty much the build up until this point for now, for the purposes of this video. Like I mentioned, there are gonna be a couple more touches that I'm going to add to finish up, but the bulk of the build is done. Whew, that took a lot longer than anticipated. Oh, hi. Hello. Oh, look at her. She wants to be on, on YouTube. She comes right up onto the, in front of the camera. But anyways, yeah, I have one more thing that I'm gonna do in this video, but other than that, all of the finishing touches, as well as like a tour, a final tour, will probably be another video when I take it out on the maiden voyage, just because I'm sure at this point, I've gotten a lot, a lot, a lot of footage. So I just wanna wrap things up, but like I said, I have one more thing to do in this video. All right, folks, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope that you got a little something out of watching me do this build. All things considered, it turned out really well. I think that it seems to be very functional and although it's not the highest quality of work, I do think that it's going to satisfy my needs. But I guess we won't know until I take it out on the maiden voyage, which will be in the next video. But anyways, thank you guys, like always, for watching. You guys go out there and go on some adventures of your own. Live life, beat the status quo, y'all know the drill. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.